Okay, now uh, we were working on the head for a bit. I want to kind of sketch out the bottom portion. Now he has a tail, okay, so the tail's not too difficult. But let's start with the feet. The feet, I have, this is actually the corner. So what we will do is we'll put a little bit of an oval. Now you kind of have to measure it. This was pretty long, so let's make that about the same. Okay, a little bit bigger. It's just a tad bigger. So let's do this. And it was about that far, so we'll do it about that far. Okay. That's how you can kind of do both sides and know that they'll look basically the same is measuring it. This is how I measure things all the time. It's just a simpler way of doing it. Uh, you can use a ruler if you want. There's nothing wrong with that, but I found that uh, this works out pretty well. All right, so we're going to put the feet in here. Sorry about that. That's my computer loading stuff up. All right, and then we go right across. We'll we'll do this here. Like, well, let's see how far his hoofs are about half of the, the amount of his foot so we're going to go right across this will be a nice little added feature to your major scene I'm going to see if I can get a couple other animals it takes me a little while to figure out exactly how I want to do them uh, simply because um, sometimes it's okay folks if you don't know how to do something and you have to research it for a while figure it out it doesn't mean you can't do it you'll just have to figure out how to do it when I did that baby Jesus, I thought, oh my goodness, I just, it's very a simple concept, it really is, but it sometimes, some of the simple things can be very difficult at times, and I couldn't get my head wrapped around it, and finally it came to me and how to do it, so take your time with, um, with doing stuff like that. Now, you can see, okay, I have this upside down, you can see that that was done from the corner. So technically we need to take this off right here, plane this down a little bit, and then go across. Alright, so let's bring this down a little bit. Alright, and then we're going to go straight across with this. Alright, that seems awfully wide to me and I don't know why that is. I guess not. Alright, now the bottom part is wider so let's let's make that just a tad wider you can always make it smaller now remember that you know if if something doesn't seem right you can always go a little bit bigger and then cut it off later it's much safer than in the long run anyway all right so we try our best to make things match this one's just a tad bigger so I can't really go with those dimensions a whole lot but alright so we're gonna go ahead and start cutting some of this out and we're gonna go straight across notice how I'm using my my thumb to push in for that cut and if you get in that habit of using your your thumb to push that blade it makes carving so much easier and all your strength is not going into your arm or, or in your hand for pushing um, you know and stuff so let's bring this out and around so we're going to cut this out and that's just a straight cut going in we're going to just bring this in a little bit try not to snap anything out okay and same thing here we're going to follow this out and around like this and you notice I'm not moving my hand I'm moving the piece when I'm when I do this sometimes moving the carving is easier than moving uh, the knife around okay we're going to go ahead and cut this out here as well now you have to be mindful. See what I'm doing here? That's not good. You need to go from the top down. There we go. It's it, The grain is running up and down. 
you're going to find resistance with it you need to turn your knife around or your piece around you know you'll get in the habit of doing that but we're going to doing straight cuts and we'll we'll shape the hoofs later um, All right, now. Okay. I have to be honest, sometimes when I carve something, folks, I don't know how I did it. <laughs> you know, I have a general idea. I just go with it, and I have fun with it, and I just create it. And to tell you verbatim sometimes how it was made, I really just have to look at the piece and see how, what the next cut is. And that's why I have it here, because I want it to look exa similar, very similar to what I have there. But, and some people go by patterns and can only do it from patterns. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, all right, let's see what, we're, what we've got here. Now, you see the hoofs here stick out away. So, we're going to take a knife, or I'm sorry, a pencil, and we're going to kind of draw where the hoof goes straight down. Okay, so, whoops, get him to sit up right there. My challenge with the cone is the ears can't can go up. If you want to, you could have cut the ears down and made it much longer. But that requires cutting it with a bandsaw, even though you're still doing it with a bandsaw anyway. Um, you can bring the ears all the way up if you like, but I like the dopey look. I call it the dopey look on them. We have a lot of, um, uh, here in the area, we have a lot of donkeys and mules and things from that the Amish have around here. And, and uh, so... You know, look at pictures on Google. That's what I do a lot of the time. Um, and there's nothing wrong with uh, with looking at that. So what we're going to do is we're drawing that line down. And we'll see how wide that is. All right, and we'll do the same thing over here. Just like so. so the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to cut this. Put a stop cut in. Put a little V cut in there. Just like so. Okay. Oh, let's do that. Now we'll shape that up a little bit later. We're just defining where things are right now. I'm going to go in a little bit. There we go. We'll figure all that out later. Yeah, there's a lot more to cut. Let's go back up here. And we'll redefine that again a little bit. And take it at it from an angle all right I see our time is almost up here so I'm gonna stop this and we'll start another one <laughs> 